Okay, um, I was just uh, talking with the students that are here so far. What has been the best so far this year? Has it been the last two months, maybe the last two weeks, maybe this semester, or um, maybe with just general biology, none, none of the content we uh, really like. You like physical science better, maybe. What is your preference? Has this, uh, these couple weeks with human biology been better? Or more interesting, let's put it that way. More interesting? How about the mammals? Okay, microbiology. Certainly not plants. Okay, then if we're going that far back to plants, what had preceded them, I guess was the microbiology, but then the lab activities came after the plants. So I believe we began, I think we ended with uh, evolution, and then we began with uh, microbiology. But semester, fall semester boring, this semester is a little better. No input? None? Okay. Do we feel comfortable with bones and muscles in the human body? Okay, well, let's go ahead and this is what we're going to do. First of all, I suppose we should get this set up. And then you'll come back to an illuminated screen. So here is our illuminated screen. So perhaps your classmates can answer this. How about you can stand behind the screen here and you can take the laser pointer and say, what is that bone? Or go down here, what is that muscle? Is that worth your time? Is that how you would like to review these? Okay. So. Who's first then? Man, for those of you who can't see this, I, I, I can't believe how fast these hands went up. There's, I got a pixel saying, pick me, pick me, pick me, I'm first, pick me. Can't you hear that? Pick me. Who wants the laser pointer? Or do we just start on one side of the room and work to the other side? Because we do un realize and understand you are responsible for this, correct? We do realize that. I mean, we're, it's not like it's all of these muscles because, for one thing, this would be pretty tough to do on account of... Uh, these are all just superficial, superficial muscles. We don't have any deep tissue. Um, that gets to be a little more difficult when um, you get here into uh, the scapular area or back of the shoulder. Quite a few deep tissue muscles there that we uh, discuss in anatomy and physiology. And the upper arm, lower arm, there's a whole bunch of those. Your uh, flexor and extensor. Uh, digitorums that actually move your fingers and then especially with that of the skeletal system all these bumps and protrusions and sockets and other structures on the bone you're responsible for knowing here's just the name of the bone so who's first or do I just stand back and take the laser pointer and point at it? OK. 
Okay? Is there one preference you have over the other, the skeletal system or the muscular system? I don't know if the laser pointer really, you really can't see that. Okay? So I'm just going to have to stand here because I don't think, yeah, it's not intense enough. You might be able to briefly see it. Muscles or bones first? Okay. Make this just a little bit bigger. And keep in mind, this is standard anatomical position. We know that because the hands here are what we call pronated, or excuse me, supinated. They're not tipped over like this. So don't always presume that these models are always standing in the same position because they're not. Okay? So right down the middle, what part of the skeleton is this? That's not identification. That was a question on your last exam. True, but it's a type of skeletal system. Okay. Yes, this is the axial going down the center where everything attaches, where you have your appendicular skeleton down here then. Okay. All four of these structures make up the what? That is your sternum. So then what are the three parts of your sternum? What's in the middle? Okay, that's out here. We're in the sternum here. There's three parts that make up the sternum. Say that again. That's correct. It's the body of the sternum. What's the bottom portion? The only bone that starts with an X. Yeah, it's a xiphoid. It's not really even a bone. It's a, a cartilaginous tissue. So then what's this up on top then? Yeah, that is your manubrium. Okay? So what is this guy right here? That's a floating rib, okay? Then the inner bone. Well, I heard radius, I heard ulna. Which one's which? I mean, both of them are right because these those are your forearm bones, but the middle one or in, inner one is, that is the ulna. Then the radius is on the outside because what happens is if you pronate that, okay, the reason it's called the radius is that will actually flip around to the inside. What was outside is then inside. Okay. What is that bone? Cranium. Well, the whole thing is the top is the cranium, so that's half right. Yeah, that's your frontal. One thing is I didn't take the time to... Uh, couldn't find a front and a back to this, like with this diagram. But regardless, what would you have on the sides? Parietal. Those are your parietal, and one in the back is what? The occipital. Okay. What is this bone right here? That's your clavicle. Okay. And let's see here. I can't. I don't think this was on your list. But it starts with an M. It's actually your mandible. I, like I said, I don't think that was on your list. Okay? From uh, here, so I'm going to extend that out to here. So between my finger and the ruler is specifically known as what? Those are your true ribs. So we had floating ribs already. What's the remaining portion right here, here, and here? Those are your false ribs. That's right. Okay. Then from the front side, it's actually uh, kind of tough to see, but you can see through the rib cage here. What is this shoulder blade called? That is your scapula. Okay. And then I believe these were on your list too. I don't. Ilium, ischium, 
I know the ischial tuberosity wasn't, but this is the ilium, this is the ischium. Okay. What's a better term than tailbone? Starts with a C and ends with an X. Coccyx, okay? And one right above it, okay? And I can't remember from the list, did we need to know individual vertebrae? Okay. Then what are these called right here? Well, it is one, you're correct. One of them is right. We hear carpals, we hear metacarpals. It is metacarpals, that's right. Because here, your wrist bones, right here, the metacarpals are your fingers, first part of your fingers. Then behind that is your carpal bones, okay? And that's why back in the, I suppose, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and even into the 80s, barely into the 90s, when it came to word processing, okay? That was not done on computer in that 50-year time frame, or 50, 60, 70, 80, yeah, somewhere in those five decades. How was word processing completed? Nope, not. It might have been handwritten first, but if it's going to be word processed, how does it get from handwritten to something like this? Typewriter, okay? So do you suppose typewriters got better with technology? Really old ones, you really had to press down hard on those. Then once you got into the uh, let's say the mid to late 80s and into the very early 90s, 1990, you would have had electric typewriters where you didn't have to quite press so hard on the keyboard. The point is, is that um, people who worked on those older typewriters, that was very hard on their wrist bones. And that's where you hear that syndrome. Does anyone know what that is? Carpal tunnel syndrome. Because when you look at the back side, just think of like piano wires. Okay? The reason we say that is when you strike the keys in a piano, there's a whole set of wires that goes through that takes a hammer and hits a drum on the inside the, the mechanism. I, I, I don't know the proper terminology, but the same type of concept would apply this type of connective tissue is connected to these muscles way back here you don't have any muscles in your finger it's all connective tissue so what would happen is as you're typing with these you can feel that this connective tissue it would really start to get swell, swelled, swelled swollen swollen up and that's why they called it carpal tunnel syndrome from having to do that for years after year after year. Okay, we get down to the lower appendages, okay? The non-weight-bearing bone. Fibula, the largest bone. I think femur, the kneecap. That's your patella, then your larger lower leg bone. That is your tibia, okay? Then, what are your ankle bones? Those are your tarsals. Then, branching out from there, I know it's probably pretty hard to see because that's where it got cut off. Follow the same pattern as in your hands. Metatarsals, that's right. Okay. Large back muscle. That might not have been on your list, but if it isn't, it will be. Starts with an L. Exactly. They just say lats. It just means latissimus dorsi. Of course, uh, dorsal or dorsi meaning the backside. This is latissimus dorsi. 
this muscle right here. Kind of like a blank door that you don't want to fall through. Or a mouse blank that they get caught in. Yep, this is your trapezius muscle. Okay? Then this one you can actually identify from the posterior side or the anterior side. What's over the top of the shoulder? Those are your deltoids. Okay? Then this abdominal muscle. So it has to be abdo abdomen in the name. It's actually abdominus. Starts with an R. Doesn't ring a bell? No? Okay. This is your rectus abdominis right here. Okay? What about this one? Oh, that's your pectoralis major, because as you would guess, under, underneath there you have the pectoralis minor. Then what's this muscle? Okay. So when we call it that, it's got two. Oh, oh, we're not quite that far yet. Would these be, if this was going to create the movement of flexion to where this is moving up in that direction. Okay? Flexor. This is a flexor, but is this in a placement slash insertion, or is this the origin, do you think? What moves, the origin or the insertion? Insertion, insertion does. So would that be up here, the insertion, or down here? It's actually down here, and it's got two insertions. That's why we refer to that as the biceps. You can kind of see they get split in half here as well. So that, yes, is the tr biceps. What do we got back here? Just the opposite. Those are your triceps. Okay? And I can't remember if this muscle is here. I just remember talking about it, how... The head gets flexed moving one way or the other. If the right one of these, notice, is looking to the right, okay? He's looking that way because his body's oriented like here, so he's looking over in this direction. So this muscle, the left one, is being flexed. Did we name that the sternal, cladal? Mastoid? Did we ever name that? We did. Okay. That'll maybe come later. Sternal cloud of mastoid. Okay. Then we'll wrap this up here shortly because we're about up to 18 minutes. Okay. Calf muscle. Search the G. Gastronemius. Okay. Then your hamstring group which the only one we talked about was this one. There's actually two more of them on this side, but this is the only one that we talked about. Biceps femoris, that's correct. Then what muscle is this? That is your rectus femoris. And notice how the fibers run up and down just like they do in this muscle here. That's why that's a rectus abdominis, and that's a rectus femoris then. So what side of the leg is this muscle on? The medial or lateral side? It's on the medial side. So it's part of the quads and starts with the V. What is that? Vastus, then what side is it on? Yeah, so vastus medialis. So then what would the corresponding one be here or here? It's not on the medial side, but rather the lateral. Vastus lateralis. Okay, we're uh, approaching 20 minutes. That's where we'll stop. We'll catch up to you next time.